Hello and welcome to another episode of The Zoo. Today we're going to talk about MyIT and MyIT Service Broker 3.2. These are some of the flagship products that BMC Software has put out the last few years and it's drawing a lot of attention in the market. Here to help me understand are the product managers, Larry Tope and Simon Blees, all the way from Vancouver. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with a quick overview of what MyIT is. Larry, can you just tell us a little bit about in a nutshell, what the traditional self-service app that we refer to as MyIT is and what it does. Sure. Um, so MyIT has been around for roughly three plus years now. And really the goal with MyIT is to provide a all-in-one uh, self-service tool to business users. So everything from where do I go when I need help or I need um, to make a request to the IT organization, I need a new application, or maybe I just need to look up for some, some knowledge. Um, MyIT really that centralized front-end experience for that. Um, along with that, we also took some cues and introduced some newer type of methodologies around social. So um, obviously I care about my peers and what they think and what they're using. So we've built in some of those mechanisms to try and get peer selected assistance um, in the application as well. And all of those things are really put together to try and enhance productivity. Um, no more long forms and filling in information but really quick and snappy ways of finding and interacting with your IT department through a really modern self-service tool. I think that kind of sums it up. And then Simon, there's a sort of backend that Service Broker fulfills. Yeah, so with Service Broker, what we're trying to uh, do is attack uh, three, three big pain points right now. One being a catalog sprawl. Let's get all those services into one location rather than having them spread, it all, spread it all over the place. The second one is on unauthorized IT. Let's give the, give the users what they're looking for so they're not going around IT uh, and, and straight to the sources and to Box and Evernote and so forth. And the last one is uh, in, in, in cahoots with the My IT is really to provide that self-service and actual auto automation of those things so people can get what they're looking for and get it done quickly instead of waiting weeks and sometimes months to get anything they need. So Larry, with 3.2, what do I get? And how is that different from what we used to see before? Um, in a lot of cases, it's not that much different. It's just getting better and quicker and faster and uh, more seamless. So we've spent the first couple of years really focusing on building out the platform, including some of those social aspects. But ever since then, we've really been focusing extremely hard on providing that rich catalog experience. So that initial experience where you would procure a service, find a service, browse for a service, rate, review services, um, we've really substantially enhanced that by including things around being able to request bundles of services. Um, the, like a shopping cart. And a shopping cart. So rather than just having a single um, request, you now can go in like you would in Amazon or iTunes and add multiple items and then obviously get driven through a systematic checkout process at the end. Um, a lot of this is all facilitated through the integration with Service Broker. So now that we have that rich back end providing us that content, um, we can now take a lot more advantage of that in the front end for the end users. So that's the one of the items. The other things are really around um, impersonation. So a lot of our customers have situations where they have admin staff potentially in the organization and they need to request things on behalf of their managers or their team. Um, so we've made that interaction far more seamless in our latest version. And then other is that, is that a, a, a a common request to have that type of feature? It's becoming more and more common. For a long time, it was really just around the business user, and that still is our foundation. Um, but even those business users have jobs that um, take them away from doing what they do typically and making that more seamless for them through that systematic or that single interface is definitely something that's come up more and more. So those are areas that we're starting to enhance as well. What else you got cooking? Um, Again, a lot of it is really around providing that, that enhanced view of the catalog, which you've really been focusing on. And then obviously, once you've procured those services, how do you track them slightly easier? How do you find the information as statuses change? Um, so that's been all been re-enhanced. There's some little fit and finish things around newer navigation to make it a little bit more seamless. Um, social sharing, so the ability to share items between users. So there might be a knowledge article that a peer comes to me and says, hey, you had a problem with your Mac, where was that thing that you found? So we now have built-in tools within the application to share that information to those other end users. And then obviously there's all the notification engines and that have been built in to systematically make that a little bit easier 
for everybody to find and interact with. Simon, the Simon, the the Facebook and one of your speakers hearing myself. Uh, the improvements you've done to service broker. How did that fit with my IT? What what what, what can you look forward to in the new version? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the stuff that Larry just mentioned, we've worked on the back end of that and, and enhanced and, and, and made better things of our uh, existing administrative type tools. So Bundle and Larry mentioned it uh, a bit there and. That was more that we have the ability to provide mandatory and optional services in a bundle. We have dynamic costs. We have the ability to uh, create one workflow for a bundle or actually be able to spawn off a bunch of individual workflows that uh, are dependent on each other. Uh, question enhancements. Uh, we went through our, our questions and uh, really enhanced a lot of the functionality, such as adding the ability for regular expressions, uh, data lookups. We have to search. Can you explain that a little bit to the layman here? What that oh, reg or, sorry, regular expressions. Just basically, we have the ability to validate field, uh, common fields such as emails and phone numbers and, and stuff like that. Just pretty, basically putting a mask on top of that so you get good data. Uh, the next one, data lookups. We have the ability to query uh, ITSM and bring in a lot of that information. Uh, file attachments. You now have the ability to submit uh, forms and so forth in, in, into your service desk. Uh, do things like just limit input length and so forth around those type of things and hidden and read only type variables in, in our questionnaire. Uh, next, sorry, no, nothing. The next one is uh, due, due to our tight integration with SRM today, we really focus on improving that import ability. And with that, we have the ability now to uh, do multiple imports. You can import the conditions within those questions, uh, any type of query qualifications and actions and triggers and so forth. Uh, to really enhance and get you up and running the second you you uh, you actually uh, get hooked up to your SRM system. Uh, next, uh, did 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 some work on our, our CMDB integration. We, we currently just had the ability to associate a, uh, a a service to a service model. Now we also have the ability to create those service models with within the CMDB. So you so you can do that all from one spot. And then last and probably you elaborate, elaborate on that service model issue. It was. Why did we need to improve that? And well, we were just getting like right now, a lot of your service models are pre-established, and you're able to associate these services that are coming in from third parties and so forth. And you want to be able to make that link into your CMDB and your existing model. So, because there you you may not have that existing service model already established, this provides the ability to just create it within Service Broker, other than actually going uh, into CMDB and going all over the place for administrative things. You can now consolidate into one spot. And so it's almost like a carrot for them to get their CMDB in, in order, which is an underlying issue many yes. times. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, connectors. Uh, so we've, uh, we have we, we focus on creating a number of connectors that will come out with, with this release. Uh, BMC HCAR case management uh, is, is, is a new product within BMC, so we're now hooked up to that. Uh, BMC Atrium Orchestrator is also a big one that we've uh, ju just finalized that, the ability to, and, and, this will help us get out quicker with a lot more types of workflows and, and so forth that we can already have established within an organization. Uh, Citrix Zen Mobile, um, the ability to import your mobile catalog and the title of those out. Uh, another big one, and probably one of the biggest bang for our bucks is, Ma is Microsoft Active Directory, uh, providing us the ability to uh, provision to desktops and mobiles. Most of these fulfillment systems actually use uh, Active Directory to, to manage the entitlements and it will it, let trigger off what, what needs to be done to fulfill those requests. And then the last one, a very lightweight one, we actually did with uh, Jira, just the ability to create tickets. Interesting. Let's go back to connectors, which is a little bit the lifeblood of Service yeah. Broker. We have we have a, a library now, and and it's been the the fun the, you know basic services that we need to get going. What's on the horizon there? We're looking to get into uh, infrastructure as a service space and really start working with the public cloud. Uh, AWS will be one that we're going to go down that path uh, relatively quickly. Uh, Azure fall, falling up very quickly in terms of the infrastructure as a service. The other angle or the other one we're focusing on uh, a bit here is the productivity uh, SaaS applications such as uh, Office 365, Workday, and, and, and that type of uh, application. There's obviously the ones, the other ones, provisioning systems like SCCM and, and so forth too. But, uh, but in terms of our big one, our next one is that Amazon or Azure environment. And Larry, when you look at my team, 
you talked about the user interface has been improved a little bit and a richer experience. Can we go back there for a second? What, what did we used to have and what do you have now? Because some of the customers I spoke to said you used to have app zone connected to it and you got the rich media. Now that disappeared and is 3.2 bringing back that rich media from the black and white? Feelings that we used to have. Um, so AppZone is still around. Um, it's still available, but it is an on-demand uh, application only. A lot of the investment has really been around service brokers. So service broker is starting to build out a lot of those capabilities and take AppZone to that next level, providing much greater enrichment in those catalog experiences. So not only the images and the metadata, but being able to configure that metadata for various types of content types. So you could have SaaS templates and uh, hardware templates, so really providing much greater detail in the data that you can provide. Um, and so those templates, those are fields and 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 other and menus and so on that you need to offer a SaaS service or a sell a hardware, and they are pre-populated. You can tweak them, but they you don't have to start from no, scratch. No, no. So the so service broker comes pre-bundled with a few different templates. And as you mentioned, it really is the organization of that data so that you can create consistency amongst similar types of applications. A SaaS application might have descriptions and technical data, whereas a hardware solution might have a whole bunch of different information that makes evaluation easier for your end users. So being able to tailor how that information gets represented to your specific end users is really what we're talking around about templates, et cetera. What do you see on the horizon? What's the next big thing in, I guess, 3.3? Um, it's gonna be much of the same. Again, one of the big things that we've talked about, if you look at my IT in general, is it's really been a place for procurement. So here's a whole bunch of services that we've made available to you. Um, we also have, here's how you track those services and obviously the social interactions. But the next big thing I think for us is really, I have services, how do I manage those services in context of the service? So where do I go to see all of the things that I have that have been assigned to me in an organization? My computer, I have a couple of them. I have two phones, I have an iPad, I have applications that I use or don't use. So being able to interact with those specific items in context of those things so that I could look at my laptop and say, okay, I need to upgrade the RAM on this specific model of laptop and have the offerings presented to me in context, I think is the next big area that we have. And again, we're gonna leverage heavily on the integrations that Service Broker provides to really provide that day two type of functionality as we move forward. Interesting. I'll leave you with this, Simon. There's this marketplace product that we are working on. How does that fit into this? How the marketplace fits into this, it is the spot where BMC is going to work with our developers and our ecosystem partners and uh, have them and us both both develop a, a number of these these connectors moving forward and what that'll do is allow us to federate these connectors down to all our, our all our instances or customers of service broker and where it's going to be hugely valuable instead of uh, when, when an end user comes to their IT department and asks for uh, uh, something to get done instead of saying three months they will be actually be able to go Check, check the list in the library of connectors that, 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 that are there through our marketplace and be able to get those uh, installed very quickly and hopefully reduce a, a whole whack of that time that, 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 that is needed to get their, uh, their end users up and running ASAP. So it'd be like an iTunes where I can go find the app I want. There's, there's a connector. And it's integrated right into Service Broker. That is very nice. That's very nice. Well, thank you both very much for your time and for the audience. I hope this has been helpful. Um, we, we need to do this again soon because I believe 3.3 is coming in a few months. I'll let you go and do what you do to make products come alive. So thank you again. Thanks, Alf. Thanks, Alf. For the rest of you out there, take care. Bye-bye.